Hello everyone and welcome to this part 5 of my complete Doctor Who DVD collection and as you can see we have the fifth Doctor here, Peter Davison. So without further ado, here is my review on all of Peter Davison's stories during the Doctor Who era. So let's get started. So like I said, I'm getting started with the fifth Doctor, which is Peter Davison, and after the regeneration from Tom Baker to Peter Davison, we have this story, which is Castrovalva. Um, some people don't really like this story. I personally don't mind it. I, I give it a 7 out of 10. Episode 1 in particular is, is really, really great. Really good. Peter Davison's very, very good in it. Um, quite bizarre and quite... I, I like how you can sort of see elements of the different Doctors like Patrick Troughton, John Pertwee and William Hartnell in particular coming through um, in his characterisation in this story. And then the rest of the story is kind of a sort of... Um, it's kind of a mystery, a mystery story taking place in the... Play, fictional place that is Castrovalva and it basically turns out to be a sort of master story which is a little bit of an underwhelming end to the story but yeah it's it's not a bad it's it's definitely not one of the best opening new doctor stories or regeneration stories and next we have Four to Doomsday, which I actually think is slightly underrated. I think this is quite good. Um, this was apparently Peter Davison's first actual recorded Doctor Who uh, story. So, um, yeah, he, he's not quite as strong as, say, he is in the first episode of Castrovalva. But I really do quite enjoy Four to Doomsday. It's quite an interesting plot. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this one. And next we have... Kinder, which is, I think, a fan favourite, and I would say I really enjoyed it. It's quite bizarre and psychedelic and all that, and what the the stuff that Tegan is going through. Tegan being one of my favourite uh, female companions, I really, really enjoyed her tenure with Doctor Who. She definitely suits um, being alongside Peter Davison rather than being alongside Tom Baker. She really suits um, Peter Davison. But yeah, Kinder is a really good story. Um, there are some sort of light-hearted elements to it as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this. I gave this an 8 out of 10. I gave Castrovalva and Fort of Doomsday both 7 out of 10. So yeah, Kinder is definitely one of the better ones from Season 19. And then we have The Visitation. This is the special edition. And I loved The Visitation. I gave this an 8.5 out of 10. I really like how the events that occur in this story basically are responsible for the Fire of London and all the rest of it. I really enjoyed that element to it. Um, and throwing in a sort of alien invasion part to that, the you know, being responsible for that. I really, really enjoyed that element. And of course, this features Michael Robbins, who I love. Um, if you're a British comedy fan, you will probably know him from On the Buses. He also appeared in The Pink Panther Strikes Again as well with Peter Sellers. And yeah, the, I really like The Visitation. Like I said, 8.5 out of 10. Yeah. And the next one we have is Black Orchid, which is a two-parter. Uh... Mm. This is probably my one of my least favourites from season 19. Um, I haven't actually heard Peter Davison's commentary on it, so I know that he gives it a rather scathing review. Um, but I, I didn't listen to that. I wanted to watch it for the first time with, with my own open mind and opinion on it. And I found it rather average. Um, the whole sort of Nyssa having a sort of doppelganger and all the rest of it, that was... That was interesting to a point, and I really like the 1920s, so, you know, I'm a massive fan of silent comedy and all the rest of it, so being set in the 1920s era, the jazz age was really nice, but as a story, I I, I found it rather boring. i give it a 5, maybe a 5.5 out of 10. I didn't think it was that great, but then we get Earthshock, which is the departure of Adric, thank God! Um, but the ending and the departure of Adric had never been done before and <laughs> it's a fantastic ending, I will go over that. Um, but Earthshock is absolutely a classic Cyberman story. Not my favourite Cyberman story, but 
definitely one of the absolute best Peter Davison stories of his entire run. It's absolutely brilliant. What is great about this is when it starts off, it kind of sort of starts off a little bit sort of, not slow, but it's taking its time to build up and everything. And then the second episode is better than the first. Then the third is even better than the second and first episode. And then the fourth episode is just amazing. It got better and better with each episode. And it ended with a very, very dramatic ending. Essentially, if you haven't seen it, uh, I would skip as far as you can from this bit now because I'm, there might be spoilers if you haven't seen it but Adric basically is killed and <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that that was it was a it was an earth shock that's for sure um not so much a shock that Cybermen uh, appear in this because uh, there they are for all to see on the front cover there but earth shock absolutely brilliant um I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 because like I said episode one was good but it, it took a little bit to get going um, but I give that definitely a 9 out of 10 I thought that was absolutely brilliant and then we have time flight and excuse the language this is time shite I do not enjoy this one at all um, Adric in sort of spirit appears and this guy here this weird thing um, can't remember what he calls himself in the episode but or the story rather but it turns out it's the master and it's awful one thing i've noticed on here if you look it says 1981 to 1984 and i think it does it on this one as well arc of infinity yes it does but all the other dvds say 1982 to 1984 just a bit of trivia there in case you haven't picked up on that um yeah so time fly it was quite an ambitious story but the budget is just so low and so badly executed the acting is very very dull um, it's just it, it, it is pretty bad. It's bad. It's not the mo it's not the worst Doctor Who story I've ever seen because there are like I said it's ambitious and there are elements that are enjoyable but overall it's pretty pretty bad and it's such a shame to end season 19 which overall was relatively good with time shite but um, yeah I give that a four out of ten and then we move on to season 20 which brings back. Omega, who appeared, of course, in The Three Doctors, and, um, yeah, th yeah, that, that was really, that was, that's really the highlight, as well as also it features Colin Baker playing one of the, um, uh, Gallifrey guards in this, that was quite interesting, because obviously he believed that once he played that role in this story, he was never going to ever have the chance to play Doctor Who, little did he know, if, if he only really was a Time Lord, he could have travelled into the future and seen what had happened. He would have become Doctor Who. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Arc of Infinity. Um, again, it's it's very average. I don't really remember too much about it. I don't, you know, to be to be honest, with some of these later stories of Peter Davison, I just I lost I lost focus on some of these stories. Peter Davison is up to this point probably my least favourite Doctor. Um, I like him, and uh, there are elements of, of him that I really like, and there are certain story types that really work with him as the Doctor, but I find him overall just a little bit, a bit dull, and uh, that's also reflected in this story. It, um, like I said, with, with actors like Troughton and Pertwee, even if you had a rubbish story, um, you could get the most out of them as actors, and it could end up elevating the story. Um, Peter Davison doesn't have that strength, in my opinion, to boost that story. But yeah, Arc of Infinity, it was yeah, it was pretty average. It was okay. I give that, I give that a five out of ten, and I give a five out of ten also to this Snake Dance, Snake Dance rather. Nowhere near as good as Kinder. Um, Martin Clunes appears in it, which is which is nice, and he's pretty good in it. But again, this is quite forgettable. I, I, there were again, there were elements in it that were quite good, but as a story overall, I just, I just didn't really get into it. And now we start the Black Guardian trilogy. Ooh. So we start with Mordrin Undead, and I've got to admit, I really enjoyed this one. Once, um, you, oh, I can never pronounce his name. Uh, Tegan? No. Oh. Turlow, that's it. Turlow. 
<laughs> I can never remember his name, Turlo. It was the introduction of Turlo. And once I'd sort of gone over and understood the whole thing, because it starts off that it looks like a 30 year old man is meant to be playing a schoolboy who's meant to be about 12 or 13. Once I got sort of past that bit um, and some tremendously poor acting at the beginning, um, I actually quite enjoyed this story. I give this a 7.5 out of 10. Maybe re-watching it, it won't get such a high score. But I just really like the whole the whole premise with involving um, the Brigadier Lethbridge-Stewart. I just love seeing him. I love him as an actor. I love him in Doctor Who. So it was really nice that he got a really focused story. And we hadn't seen him, I think, since... Uh, well, it was definitely, it was definitely during the... Um, Tom Baker era. I'm not sure if it was Robot or it might have been one other one that he appeared in. Oh, I think it was. Um, oh, what was it? <sighs> I forget. I, Terror of the Zygons. I think that was his last one. That the last one that he appeared in before this one was Terror of the Zygons. So it was really nice to see the Brigadier and this whole sort of thing um, of him catching himself in the past and in the future and and all that. So Mordred Undead. That part of it was really good. The whole Black Guardian side of it I found was rather average. But I give it 7.5 because of the Brigadier. Really, really good. But I can't say the same for Terminal Boredom. Terminus, absolutely rubbish, horrible story. I've heard bad things about this story, but I thought, you know, I'll be open-minded, I'll give it a try and see for myself, but no, I, I'm, I'm in agreement. It was the departure of Nyssa, and um, Nyssa was not really, she, she wasn't really utilised very well in the stories, up to this point anyway, so it was probably a good idea for her to be departing the series in that respect. Um, but yeah, Terminus... I, I, again, it just bored me, bored me to tears. The epidemic in it wasn't enough to keep me interested. I just wanted this one to end. I, I literally watched this one just to get through to the next story, which was Enlightenment, which was even worse. I give I give Morgan Undead a 7.5, but I give Terminal Boredom a 3 out of 10, and I give Enlightenment... 3 out of 10, but I would say out of the two, I liked this one even less. The guy who played Roy Evans in EastEnders, who appeared in Colony in Space, appears in this again. Um, and this is the end of the Black Guardian trilogy. And, oh, I just didn't like it. I just really didn't like this one, I'm afraid. Uh, there there might, might be some people out there that really like the Black Guardian trilogy, but uh, I am not one of these people. I really didn't. I just found it so unbelievably dull, badly executed, really boring. I, I, oh, there's nothing left really to say. I just was glad it ended. Um, so, yeah, that's the Black Guardian trilogy. Started off well and just got progressively worse. 3 out of 10. Not the, not the worst stories. Um, that, still, that, that award still goes to the Leisure Hive because there was just really, other than the ending of episode 1, there was nothing about Leisure Hive that I could tolerate. It was actually made me angry. And then we have the two part of the King's Demons set in the medieval times. Um, yeah, I quite like this one. I thought this was a nice little two-parter. Not the greatest Doctor Who story ever, but it was still enjoyable. So the King's Demons I gave 7 out of 10. And then we have the 45, no, hour and a half, sorry. The hour and a half, 25th anniversary special that is The Five Doctors. What can I say? Absolutely fantastic. Such a shame that Tom Baker didn't end up being a part of it. I think it would have been really nice to have seen him playing off Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee. And of course, sadly, William Hartnell had passed away. So I don't know what the actor's name is. You'll have to remind me in the comments or I'll look it up. But um he plays obviously the William Hartnell Doctor, and he was he was pretty good. And we get to see some old faces as well in terms of companions. We get to see Sarah Jane Smith. Would have rather have obviously seen, um, uh, oh God, Katie Manning um, with, alongside John Pertwee. That would have been really nice to have seen. Um, yeah, and uh, Peter Davison is quite good in it, but obviously I enjoy it mostly just for seeing Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee. But the story is very good. It answers a lot of questions and it opens up a lot of new ideas about the Doctor Who saga and the whole adventures of Doctor Who and the history behind it and all the rest of it. So, yeah, five Doctors. Um, I would give. I gave them five Doctors a nine out of ten. I don't think it's quite as good as three Doctors. Um, but I still think it's definitely an essential watch and definitely an essential Peter Davison story. 
And then we have the first story from season 21, which is Warriors of the Deep. Um, oh, three out of ten again. This was rubbish. The fact that you had the Sea Devils and the Silurians in one story could have been absolutely fantastic. It could have been up there with Earthshock. But it wasn't. It was a big pile of poo. I'm afraid. So, yeah. Warriors of the Deep. Three out of ten. Just, again, one of those I just wanted to get through just to get to the next story. The Awakening, yeah, a, a not bad not bad two-parter, not, not the greatest. Uh, I gave this a 7 out of 10. It was quite interesting. Not much to say on it. Frontios, on the other hand, I gave an 8 out of 10. Again, like Earthshock, this got better and better as it went along. Really good story and very, very dark. And this is what I wanted to say earlier about Peter Davison. He really suits these morbid, dark stories. I really, really liked uh, like those sort of stories. And um, yeah, Frontios, Frontios is definitely um, one of those. Yeah, that that was a very dark story, and I really enjoyed it. Really, really good. And then we have Resurrection of the Daleks. I think this is underrated. I think this is very, very good. I, I think this is one of the best uh, Dalek stories. Um, for me anyway, I think, not for Peter Davison so much, but for the story itself. And it's the departure of Tegan, which was uh, very sad. Sad to see her go, but it was quite an interesting end. Um, yeah, really light Resurrection of Daleks. Uh, made into two episodes, which were 45 minutes each. Um, that would become the norm during the Colin Baker era. But yeah, Resurrection of the Daleks, I gave that an 8.5 out of 10. Again, another very dark story. And um, yeah... I would say this is probably, I would probably say this is the best Dalek story since Genesis of the Daleks, really. I really, really enjoyed Resurrection of the Daleks. Then we have the two-parter Planet of Fire, which introduces the character, of course, of Perry. And this is the departure of uh, Turlo. Thank God Turlo left in this story. And Perry, who I love as a companion, I, I really love her. Um, she first appears in this, in a bikini, no less. That was quite interesting. But, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed Planet of Fire. Um, I th well, no, sorry. No, I didn't. I'm thinking of the next one. <laughs> no, Planet of Fire. Lost track there. I was just thinking about Perry's bikini. Um, yeah, Planet of Fire. Um, very average. It's a very average story. Another master story. Um, not particularly great. Um, other than the, the fact that it's the introduction of Perry, I, I didn't find this overly entertaining. It was all right. But, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, like I said, certain stories, Peter Davison as the Doctor just doesn't hold my attention. But he did, and the whole cast did in this story. His final story, The Caves of Androzani. This is a brilliant story. I give this an 8.5 out of 10. I don't think it's as fantastic as some people praise it as. I don't think it's a 9, 10 out of 10 story. Maybe rewatching it, I might get a new, newer appreciation of it. But there is some quite iffy acting uh, from this guy right here, um, which sort of brings it down a bit. But this guy here is absolutely fantastic. I love Perry again in this, of course. And um, Peter Davison, like I said... Oh, oh. Peter Davison in this, like I said, is very, very good when it comes to the sort of darker stories. And The Caves of Androzani is a, definitely a dark story, an absolute essential. And, um, yeah, and also it's, of course, his regeneration story. And it's one of the one of the better uh, end to a Doctor story, really. One of the better ones. But, yeah, I, I think Caves of Androzani is a really nice end to the Peter Davison era, and it's nice that he ended on a, a very high and highly regarded story. Definitely worth a watch, this one. So there we go. I give uh, Peter Davison's era... Oh, Colin. Keep still. Yeah, I give Peter Davison's era probably overall a 7 out of 10. Um, there are some fantastic stories like The Visitation, Earthshock, um, of course... Um, where is it? Where, where have you gone? Uh, the Five Doctors, um, Frontios, Resurrection of the Daleks, and Caves of Andrew Zani. But the the problem I have, like I said, with Peter Davison is just that his his acting, or as the Doctor, I don't know if it's his acting or if it's just his characterization of the Doctor. I just I just find it sometimes can be really quite draggy and dull and 
he doesn't bring enough to keep my attention sometimes in certain stories. And of course there are some pretty awful stories during his era and that of course is no fault of his. He admits himself that he thought that uh, Black Orchid was an absolutely awful story. So you know, probably the writing of certain stories, especially things like Warriors of the Deep and Terminus and Enlightenment are sort of low points uh, during his era. Um, but overall, yeah, it's enjoyable. There's some, like I said, there's some outstanding stories like Frontiers, Res Resurrection of the Daleks, Caves of Andrusani, Earthshock, Visitation, Kinder, and some pretty good ones like uh, For Fort to Doomsday, um, King's Demons. So, yeah, there are some really good stories in there. But yeah, he he's not my favourite Doctor. I'd probably say up to this point, out of the five Doctors I've watched, he's probably my fifth favourite Doctor. Um, just after William Hartnell who would come forth for me but um, there we go so next I will be reviewing the very unstable Colin Baker um, but I'll be doing Colin Baker next um, I've watched a couple of his stories already and personally I'll get to the twin dilemma because that the story itself is a different kettle of fish but in terms of the actual characterization I actually really like Colin Baker he holds my attention and I find him much more entertaining at this at the moment than uh, Peter Davison and of course him with Perry I think is a fantastic partnership I think they work really well together so I'll be looking forward to reviewing Colin Baker sort of controversial era of Doctor Who sadly but um, there we go so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get through it, but, you know, we have lives, don't we? <clears throat> so don't forget, like, subscribe, share and comment, and I will see you folks on the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, bye bye